Amazon Web Services EC2 gives you key pairs or keys to access virtual machines that you create on EC2. Now they only let you download each key pair once when you first create the virtual machine. There's a problem that happens when you lose that key pair because then you don't have access to that virtual machine and you might have a lot of important stuff on that. You don't want to delete that easy to instance, so what can you do? This tutorial will teach you how to change your key pair and get your EC2 access to your virtual machines after you lose your key pairs. First thing that we will do is get an SSH client on Windows because Windows does not come by default with any SSH client. We'll check out something called MOBA Xterm. It's a popular program that's very lightweight that provides an SSH client to Windows. I like using it and there's a free home edition that I'll use for the purpose of this tutorial. I'll leave this link in the description and you can download it as well. After you have installed Mobile Xterm, we can check it out briefly. I'll open the program and show you what it is. It basically provides some Unix capabilities, but especially the SSH client is what we need to SSH remotely to our virtual instances on EC2. Now the second step is to get on Amazon AWS. We'll check out what we currently have on our AWS console. You can sign in your console with your Amazon Web Services account, and we'll check the EC2 dashboard to see what instances that we have currently. When we check on the EC2 dashboard, if you click on the left side, you'll open up the EC2 dashboard, click on running instances, and you can see all the instances that you have running currently. I have two instances running, but one of which I do not have access to currently. This one with my key name, we Lee. I do not have access to anymore because I lost this key pair and so I will demonstrate how to create a new key pair and then use that key pair to access your old instances that you have lost your key pair. First thing we'll do is stop the instance. We'll stop the instance that we want to get access to. The one that we do not have the key pair anymore. So I stop that instance and it's stopping currently. Keep note of the instance ID. I'll keep note that it is I30. Second step is to go to volumes. Underneath volumes, you can see the whole volume or the whole hard drive, virtual hard drive that's currently being used. You detach the one with the instance ID. So this volume had I30. So I right clicked and detached the volume. So right now, I detached the volume that was connected to that instance that I stopped. Remember, I stopped it, not terminated. Now I launch an instance with that blue button. I'll go down and select Ubuntu because Ubuntu is that instance that I had for the previous one. So I'll select the same type of operating system. I'll let it have a T2 micro, the free tier eligible, but on the configure instance details on step 3, we need to keep note of the subnet. The subnet has to be in the same exact region as our original EC2 instance. For example, US East 1A, if, we, if I'm going to open up a new tab and look back on the EC2 dashboard, and I'll show you that for the dashboard, for that original instance that I want access to, it has US East 1A. So I want to create a new instance with the same availability zone. So check back with the original instance what available availability zone it is and make sure that your new instance that you're creating has the same availability zone. So we add storage, we leave those by default. Under configure security groups, make sure I'll show you an example of my security group that I use. I use a security group with the following. I like to open SSH, HTTP, HTTPS, and the custom TCP rule of 8080. So the only one that you really need is 22, but these are extra web server, website type of security groups that you can use. We review and launch, and at this step, this is why we're creating a new instance. We're creating a new instance so that, for example, right here you can 
choose an existing key pair or new one. I've already downloaded a personal website key pair and so I'm choosing an existing one but if you were to create a new key pair then you select create a new existing key pair, give it a name and then you download it. And that's where you get the new key pair that you're going to use and place it on the old one. So basically we have an existing key pair at this moment by creating a new instance. So we do this whole creation of a new instance because we had to get the key pair originally and we have to do some things with this instance. So back on your SSH client, mobile xterm, we cd c colon slash because this is a Windows and we're going, getting to the root of the local disk drive. Then I switched, I cd changed directory to my users and my username and downloads because my key pair is currently in my downloads. Now if we do ls space dash lah we see all the permissions. So if you look at that command ls is just listing all the contents of the directory. Now over here you can see that I have my personal website dot pem. The key, the new key that we will use is right here. And it has my owner as my username, and also it belongs in the user group. But we also want to confirm these permissions. Sometimes the permissions aren't right, so I'll go over them. We use chmod to change the permissions, and we use the number 600 for read and write for the user, and 00 for next for the group and everyone else. So we only want to give the user uh, read and write access. And then we put the name of the file, which was personalwebsite.pem. Now for the ownership, the group ownership might be wrong if you're using Windows. So what I like to do is double check, use chown to change ownership of the group. So we do colon users, capital users, with the name of the file. And then the permissions are all set. So if we go back to the EC2 instance, it should be still initializing, but get that public IP. Click on the EC2 instance, the new one copy the public IP and then we'll try to SSH into this instance to make sure that things are working. So the command is SSH space dash I space the key name space Ubuntu at so we use Ubuntu here because it's an Ubuntu operating system that I created and AWS uses Ubuntu as a user so we're remotely connecting to the user at this public IP. So that user is just simply uh, the default user that AWS uses. We should be able to get access simply and we'll be on that virtual machine. So after giving it a couple seconds, we are on the virtual machine. And now what we will do is basically what we're going to do is attach Okay, well, we're going to exit, first of all, because we're going to do some things with the volumes. So first, we're going to stop this newly created EC2 instance. So the one that we just connected to, we will stop it. Not terminate, but stop. Back on the volumes. Keep note of the instance ID. So mine is IA94. So back at the volumes, we check. So uh, this is the original one, right? We can attach it to an instance type and we're going to attach it to IA94, which is the instance that we just created. So we're attaching the old volume that we could not get access to, to the new one. And then we just attach. So basically right now we, we restart that instance that we just stopped. So the new one has two volumes attached to it. The one that, was created by default with it and also our old volume from our original website or our virtual machine. The one that we could not get access to is now a second volume on um, the newly created instance step. So we're going to start this and wait until it initializes and basically what we will do is copy the authorized keys to the new volume so that we can access to well copy the authorized keys from the new volume to the old volume so we ssh take the um okay so you get 
if you use the same exact command, you'll get this problem for remote host uh, change. Because what happens with AWS EC2 instances is that IP changes if you don't have an elastic IP. Uh, so what happened was the public IP changed. So if you click on this, copy the newly created public IP. What happened was AWS reinitializes the IP. So the machine has a different public IP. So all you do is use the same command, Ubuntu at new IP. Once we get onto the instance, we will use fdisk-l with the sudo command to see all the partition, all the volumes on the machine. So the name of the volume is slash dev slash xvdf1. Basically, you might have a different name for it, but by default, if you just select by default uh, partition of the volume, then what you do now is you sudo mount the slash dev xvdf1 to slash mount. And if you ls list the contents of mount, then you see that there's another machine on mount now. So what we have done is mounted our old volume to slash mount. So we pulled the vo old volume and then put it on a folder on our new volume. Now if we copy our .ssh slash authorize underscore keys to slash mount slash home slash Ubuntu because Ubuntu is the user slash dot ssh slash authorized keys so basically we're replacing the old volume to authorized keys authorized keys is where it authorizes this key is valid right so we copy the old volumes authorized keys to well the new volumes authorized keys which authorizes the personal website dot pen to the old authorized keys and we replace it now after we do that we unmount, so you mount slash mount, but we need the sudo command, so you use sudo, sudo is super user, and we use super user to unmount slash mount, and then we exit from the machine. So all these commands, I know I rushed it, but I'll leave directions in the description. Afterwards, we go back to our EC2 dashboard, and we see that things look the same, but what we want to do is on our instances if we go back to instances we want to stop it first so on our instances on our EC2 dashboard we right click that instance and we stop now back at our volumes we want to detach both of these volumes so we detach the volume from our old or from that new machine there's an error because the instance hasn't stopped yet so I need to wait a couple seconds but after a couple seconds we detach the volume that was on this newly created machine and then we detach the very old volume that we wanted access to so after detaching both volumes, I'll do it again. Now it works. We detach both of these volumes. We go back to instances and it stopped. Now what we can do is we can terminate this newly instance, newly created instance, because we don't need it anymore. We only needed it to copy the authorized keys to the old volume. And now, with this i30, keep note of that instance ID that we wanted original access to, we take the old volume that we had and we reattach it to where it belongs, to i30. So we right-click, attach volume, i30. And device, you want to make sure that this is slash dev slash sda1. sda1 is the main volume that we have to have. It has to be slash dev slash sda1 to return to its original position. Then we just start because we don't need to worry about that newly created volume. We just need to reattach the old volume to where it belongs on that old instance. So what we have done so far 
is we just change the authorized keys to authorize personal website PEM to get access to this machine. And we just detached and reattached the volume back to where it originally belongs. We can delete the newly created volume that we created to do this all attaching and detaching. And we can just delete that because we don't need that anymore. So now it's initializing, but we should have access to public IP, copy that public IP from that original EC2 instance. And you just SSH dash I personal website PEM Ubuntu at the original IP that we originally want to access to, but we didn't have the key. And with our new key, we just change that IP's key pair and you get access to it. So thanks for watching one. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and you get access to your original EC2 instance.